right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and start. Hold on just a minute. To share my screen. Hello, lovelies. My name is April M. Woodard, and I write sci fi fantasy fiction. I've self published three out of the four books in my series, The Anne Chronicles. The fourth book in my series will be complete in February. It will be published in February. It's complete right now, actually. I'm done. Um, but yeah, so looking back on all of my hard work these past seven years, I've come to the conclusion that health and well being are just as important as learning how to show, not tell. So today for my workshop, I'm going to be talking about the writer wellness, because I think it's something that us creative writers overlook. Writer wellness is more than a bubble bath on self-care Sunday. It's about balancing your body and your creative mind. Many times we as writers get carried away with our projects and forget about caring for our physical and mental well-being. Today, I'm going to go over some things that we need to keep in mind when working on our works in progress. Nourish your mind, body, and soul. Having a healthy lifestyle will help you reach your goals and dreams of publishing. I don't think us writers realize that we do need to eat. So food plays a big part in how well your brain will work for you. Now, I personally do intermittent fasting in the morning by drinking a full glass of lemon water before I work out. And then I eat breakfast after my body has woken up. Uh, my body does not like anything uh, in the stomach <laughs> before I start my day, but that doesn't mean that I skip breakfast, at least not anymore. Now, if you were like I was, you tend to jump right into your work with a cup of coffee. Hours pass, and before you know it, you're crashing from caffeine and starving for lunch. Sometimes we skimp on dinner as well, or maybe we don't take my kids often remind me that a pack of ramen noodles is not dinner because I've told them that so many times before and they're right I guess I should eat what I dish out pun intended eating healthy can increase your energy level enhance your immune system fuel your physical activity and reduce your risk of heart disease cancer and other health problems and trust me this is a biggie because as soon as I eliminated sodas and other very sugary stuff from my diet the inflammation in my body like decreased a ton, like a whole, whole bunch. And I also haven't had any flare ups with my shingles because, you know, I cut that from my, my diet. And so my immune system has done a lot better too. And I don't get sick as often. Some really great brain foods that you can try are spinach, eggs, walnuts, and oats. And I know some people are allergic to eggs and walnuts. Uh, so um, these are just a few of them. There are a lot of other brain foods out there. This is a big one, guys. We've got to drink more water. And I say we, me included. Dehydration causes unclear thinking. And lemons really help flavor your water. I know I don't like drinking plain water. Well, I used to not like drinking plain water. Now it's not a big deal. But I, when I started to try to get my body used to like a bunch of fluids being inside, <laughs> Because I would dehydrate myself like every day. I would only drink maybe like an eight ounce glass of water. That's it. Everything else was either coffee or soda or or sweet tea. You know, and I was just, you know, living my best life, but not really because I was making myself sick constantly. And I felt like crap. And that's why I had to take lots of um, sick days when I was trying to write. But um, lemons contain um, nutrients that protect your body against disease. And yeah, I didn't try to say that word. You know, so I skipped over the word, but it's there. You can try it for yourself. So how much water should you drink? Um, I found this really good thing when I Googled and it said you should drink based on your weight. So try to drink between half an ounce to an ounce of water for each pound that you weigh. And it makes it super easy. Like 
So for example, if you weigh 150 pounds, that would be 75 to 150 ounces of water a day. And it, it's even easier when you use like a 16 ounce like bottle um, because, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you're supposed to uh, drink eight, eight ounce glasses a day, right? Or seven, eight ounce glasses a day. Um, but this is the best way to do it. Yes, you're going to be going to the restroom every hour, uh, but you can just refill your body with water after you go to the bathroom and in an hour, just repeat the cycle. And you'll probably be doing this all day, especially until your body gets used to you putting so much fluid in there. Some really great ways that you can drink more water are to set a timer. I've done this. I set a timer for every hour one day and it really did help because I would just forget. Um, ex except when I tried the method of go drink water after you go to the bathroom. Um, but I'd have to start the day off by drinking a whole glass of water, right? Um, keep water nearby. I keep my water in a sealed up little easy to carry water bottle that's um, stainless steel and it's got like a, a twist top on it. Makes it super easy. It's almost like a ginormous like plastic water bottle, but it's not plastic. Um, Cause that's how I started. I just started off with the 16 ounce plastic bottles, but that's not, you know, good for the environment and also it's it's not um I don't they would they would just get trashed by you know after a week so uh and you can't clean those so uh but you can flavor it with fruit that's another thing it's easier to put fruit in here uh in my water bottle and uh yeah there's lots of ways you can drink more water uh like I said there's lemon you can put pineapple you can put strawberry in there uh but find ways that you would drink more water do not use the things you get at Walmart or Costco or whatever that are the flavor your water stuff they're not good for you a lot of them have aspartame in them and aspartame is is very bad for people that's a lot of diet sodas have aspartame so you have to be very careful closest to natural you can get is the best way to go another thing that us riders don't do is stretch or exercise, or even move. We will sit in our chair in awkward positions. I always like to sit with my knee up on, um, like up on my elbow, and kind of rest my elbow on my knee and be cockeyed, like just totally jacking up my back. Um, we none of us sit in a chair properly. If you do, kudos because I know I don't. Some of us sit, or some of us might sit on the couch or somewhere super comfortable. But the way we sit is just not good for our spine. Uh, and so this is where stretching every hour comes into play. Stretching can improve posture because tight muscles can cause poor posture. So if you've been in a uh, awkward position or just sitting somewhere for a long length of time, like five hours straight or whatever, you know, and you don't get up very long, you're, you're on a riding streak, right? I've done it. I've sat for two hours straight without getting up plenty of times. Um, but stretching can also decrease back pain. Stretching can decrease muscle soreness. And so this helps with a lot of, you know, back problems that us riders get or neck problems. I know a lot of us have really bad neck problems. Um, so that would be good. So proper posture and stretching is very important. What can you stretch? Your neck, your back, your legs. Um, there are lots of, of stretches and I plan to do like a little PDF eventually to post on my website of some really easy stretches that you can do like uh, every hour to kind of stretch a little bit um, after an hour of a writing session. And so having a schedule guides you in determining what your priorities are so that you can spend the right time on the right task. Ways you can use a schedule, it doesn't have to be a planner, I personally like my planner, is to use a whiteboard and just write everything down. You can use Google Calendar, which is really spiffy. I also use my Lexi. I'm gonna say Lexi so she doesn't wake up and uh, wait for a command. Um, I use her all the time, uh, but I also use my planner. I'm a very visual person. I like to look at my calendar, see what I have on it and have scheduled. Um, but I also use my Lexi for reminders and my Google Calendar. Um, because my Google Calendar goes hand in hand with certain appointments and things that I have scheduled online. If you are a mom or dad, raise your hand. 
That's right. Yeah, I'm one too. I have three children ages uh, about to be 14. I've got one that's thir about to be 13 and one that is um, 10 and she will be 11 in February. So um, stepping stones almost, right? Especially the two that are only about a year apart. But I have three and it was very difficult. I was pregnant with one of them and I had toddlers and I was trying to write books. Um, that's when I took about a year off and I didn't write again until they were a little bit older until it was more manageable. But um, I'm glad that I took that time off because those were some very memorable like ages that they were. And uh, I'm glad I didn't miss anything being, being in my writing cave. Um, but not to say that you can't do that. You just have to make sure you are scheduling time for your work versus your family. And I say that sincerely like because um you don't want to be where I was a couple years ago where my kids were like mom you never spend any time with us and that hurts and sometimes when they're little you know they can't really they can't say that so um I have to flat out be like mom you are not spending any time with us you're always writing your book and that's exactly what they said and so I knew yes I my book was super important I had deadlines that I had made of course but there, your family is way more important than, you know, writing. Yes, it's your passion. It's your destiny. You're going to do this thing, but they will grow up before you know it. They'll be gone. That's, I mean, I know a lot of us like have parents that say, oh, before you know it, they'll be all grown up because they've already gone through it. Um, and me, now that my kids are getting a little older, one's almost 16, uh, not quite almost 16, but it's like around the corner. I know it is. And so I'm just kind of reminding you guys to uh, take, because you can photograph them, but they can never be relived. And showing your children that you love and care for them helps to keep them mentally and emotionally strong. But here's some things that I did. I, you know, I, I work like, you know, I'm like, okay, my husband works nine to five. I can work nine to five, basically. Actually, it's more nine to three. I check out, my brain checks out around two. Uh, but the weekends, I'm fully dedicated. Bedtime, I'm fully dedicated. Dinner time, I'm fully de dedicated. After school, I'm fully dedicated, um, usually, unless they're off doing their thing. But uh, like I said, I check out. My brain checks out at two anyway. So by the time they get home around three, I'm good to go. Let's do homework. Let's chat about how school was. Tell me everything you want to tell me about Susie and her braids or that like someone got a new pet. Like, just tell me all about it. And now we're on to my favorite topic, which is sleep. Sleep has to be one of the most important things next to eating and drinking and movement. It's so super simple, but honestly, it's really all about the diet, exercise, adequate H2O, and yes, getting adequate sleep. If you stay up drinking Red Bull, like I'm saying this, hold on, I'm saying this because this is me. I'm talking about me. I'm not getting on you guys. If you stay up drinking Red Bull, pulling an all-nighter till 4 a.m., like I have done on many occasions, you are going to crash. Eventually, there will be burnout uh, because it's all about balance and it's all about functioning properly. Uh, if you have a writer binge, that's not balance, right? That's overdoing it for a short period of time, like sprinting. And this is more of a marathon, guys. Riding is more of a marathon, not a sprint. It's okay to do sprints. Right? It's okay to do rider sprints, but not till four o'clock in the morning. Now, I know some of you guys are night riders. That, as long as you are or get adequate sleep during the day, because maybe you're able to do that, cool. But if you have a day job and then you stay up, you're going to feel like somebody beat you with a baseball bat. So as you can see, sleep is an essential function that allows your body and mind to recharge, leaving you refreshed and alert when you wake up. If you do not rest, you will get cranky. You will get snappy. Um, that's why I said these binges of four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. And then the next day you have to like still do life is not good. I've done it. My husband's like, who are you? I'm like, look, I was riding last night and I drank like four cups of coffee. So leave me alone. He's like, oh my gosh. like. Because he thought I was PMSing, but I was not PMSing. I was just cranky from my writer binge. It's like almost like having a hangover. 
uh, with the extra crabbiness. Here are some ways that you can get better sleep. Schedule your bedtime. No caffeine after lunch. That is right. I said lunch, people. <laughs> you can take a warm bath. Um, I really love my Himalayan salts and my Epsom salts and um, like my baking soda, things like that. If I feel like I'm just super wound up and I, I just don't think I'm going to sleep, my decaffeinated tea. You can totally have tea. It's got to be decaf. No caffeinated anything after lunch. Um, and I guarantee you're going to like feel so much better if you work out in the morning or find a time that you can work out during the day because your body is like, wow, we did so much and it will be ready to just pass right out. Um, it's shoot, I'm trying to think about three months, probably four months, maybe five, um, that I have been going to sleep at like 10 o'clock on the dot. My body has been trained. It knows 10 o'clock. I'm passing out. And my husband's like, wow, even, even on the weekend, sometimes it's like, nope, we are going to the, it's 11. Whoa, way too long. We've been up way too long. Uh, so I can't hang with the big dogs no more. I, I got to go take my naps and go to sleep. And so there's some advice too. If you're feeling super run down, listen to your body. And if you can take a nap, take a nap at five, 10 minutes of shut eye, 20 minutes. Um, I don't, think 30 minutes is really the best because sometimes you can get groggy, but less than 15 to, you know, 20 minutes, you're usually in the really good zone. Um, but yeah, definitely listen to your body because sometimes we do run ourselves ragged without realizing it just from life in general. And if our body's like, wow, you're really tired. You're like, yeah, I really am tired. Just listen to your body and lay down, and close your eyes for a little while. I guarantee you it, it's because your body needs it. So now we're coming to support. Um, support is super important. Uh, I, I'll tell you guys a little story. When I first started, nobody really understood why I was writing a novel series. Um, I'm like, why? <laughs> Some people were really proud of me, but my husband was like, this is a hobby. You're going to get tired of it. You're not going to follow through. You're going to, you know, like most of your other projects, you're probably going to just be like, yeah, I'm done. Uh, I did that with crocheting. I had a business crocheting um, baby photography stuff. And then it was stuffed animals and such and such. But nobody really buys handmade anymore. So yeah, uh, I quit that. It was a hobby turned trying to make, you know, a dollar, but it didn't work out. This is a little different because it is my passion. And once I published that first book, though, my husband was all in and he was telling everybody about it. Um, and so yeah, it's, but you can get depressed and, and some anxiety from um, not having support. And so it was very hard because I was dedicating a lot of time to writing my book and some people just really did not get it. And so, um, yeah, make sure you get some support. Friends prevent loneliness and give you a chance to offer needed companionship. Friends can also increase your sense of belonging and purpose. So writing groups are absolutely amazing uh, because, you know, we have like minds. And so they understand the struggles. They understand um, our terms, like our writer terms, like 20,000 some words. They understand, you know, the, the acronyms and all that fun stuff. Um, WIP, the work in progress. So where can you find friends and how do you make time with friends? And so writing groups are absolutely amazing. Sometimes you can find basically soulmates on uh, online um, and writers get you. They understand your acronyms, your terms, your struggles, your, you know, your coffee addictions, all that. Um, and gosh, yeah, I really love coffee. So don't let me harp on you guys about coffee. Uh, I just, I just know that you'll feel so much better. I, I get a lot of this like, April, do you just want me to give up caffeine when I do my like coaching? They're like, they're like, you won't let me have coffee. I'm like, you can, you can have coffee, just not after lunch. Uh, speaking of lunch, you can have lunch with uh, friends or family uh, and phone calls. I have a lot of people that I talk to over the phone that are writer friends. In person does feel 
better, but you know, it's just the reality of it is you, we probably can't. And especially with the things that are going on with um, everything, just, you know, we just kind of can't do it. And speaking of writer friends, let's talk about creative grief. And creative grief is joked about between us writers, but I don't think we take into account the toll characters have on us. We think we're in control, right? But are we really in control? We brought these characters into the world and often we take them out in the most devastating way we could conjure, right? On those days that you are writing emotional scenes, make sure you have time to yourself to work through those emotions because their emotions are your emotions. And sometimes us writers don't realize that until later on the day, you just feel this like weight on your shoulders or you're experiencing something you can't explain. And most likely it is your character that you, it, it's kind of like method acting, you know? Uh, you feel what they were feeling. Their victories are our victories and their grief is our grief. So when they lose someone, it's like we have to grieve over it. I know I've grieved over characters where I've been like, told my husband, because he's like, what's wrong with you? You just don't look happy. And I'm like, look, I had to kill somebody off today. So could you just give me like a minute? Just give me a minute. Okay. <laughs> That's why writers get each other, right? We do. Uh, writing characters can be exhausting. So take time for those emotional chapters. Alone time is an opportunity to let your mind wander and strengthen your creativity. So without the need to take care or interact with people, you can ignore the outside influences and focus inward. So um, having some kind of time alone, just quiet time. It helps you work through your emotions. It helps you come up with more creative ideas. It's just really great. I think everybody should be able to have at least one hour of silence alone to themselves every day. It's usually not possible, right? But gosh, that would be great. Deserved rest. And a lot of people don't realize that, yes, Netflix, I consider the best rest ever because I detach from the world completely when I'm watching a show. Um, also reading, um, a hobby. I love to crochet and listen to music or also watch TV. So I like to multitask. So I'll be Netflixing and doing my crocheting. Um, and their dress would be like a me day, which we don't usually get as mom, right? A me day would be great where you just get to basically do whatever you want to do and not think about writing at all. So it is cool to take a me day. I do suggest everybody take a break from writing um, at least once every seven days. Take a, take a take a weekend, take take it off. Like just give yourself a break. Let's talk about affirmations. Now I'm not talking cheesy affirmations. I don't like those. But I do like the affirmations. Uh, and I'm going to share a few with you guys in just a sec. But I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to give up this whole writing gig. With my first book, I had a I, I had like massive imposter syndrome. Um, I didn't give myself grace. I didn't say, hey, you're just now learning, April. It's okay. You, it's going to take years for you to know how to write because you you know, nobody really taught you. You're teaching yourself. And I couldn't really understand that. I was like, yeah. And once I was done with my first book and I was like, wow, you know, it's actually good. I was like, wow, I did that. That was me. I applied myself. I really did it. Um, so we just, we compare ourselves to others. Um, and we just really do not give ourselves the credit where credit's due. Now we feel like imposters, not because we are uniquely flawed, but, and we are uniquely flawed. Everybody's got flaws, right? I do. Everybody does. But because we fail to imagine how deeply flawed everyone else must necessarily also be beneath a more or less polished surface. So, you know, we'll see people that, are, you know, best selling authors, uh, those that are, you know, have their books up there on the shelves in the bookstore. And, you know, we look them up and we're like, wow, they're really doing their thing. They have rough days too, guys. They have their own stories. They have their own struggles. You know, yeah, some people did get lucky. Yes, some people did. But people are people and everybody's dealing with something. So um, 
just remember that, that like, yeah, we put people up on a pedestal, but if we probably really got to know them, you know, that that's why they say never, ever meet your idol. Cause you know, people are disappointed. Uh, cause we put people in this like imaginary, like, I don't know, like gods, like they're gods to us. And, but once you meet them, you're like, oh, you're not what I thought you were. <laughs> Maybe sometimes they are. Maybe they're everything and more. Speaking of affirmations, my favorites are song lyrics. And so, of course, we have one here from The Great Showman, uh, Thomas Rhett, sing by Listens to Country. I'm not the biggest fan of country, but I do have some country songs that I've saved as um, quotes. The Eagles, of course. Oh, so many good quotes. And of course, the Beatles, one of my ultimate favorites um, is all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to arrive. Blackbird is one of my ultimate favorite songs. Um, but yeah, so get you some affirmations, put them um, on your bathroom mirror, put them on your vision board, put a little sticky note on, at your computer, whatever you need to do to remind yourself of why you do what you do. Because if you don't have a why, it's a lot harder to meet your goals, a lot harder to keep going. So make sure you have an affirmation somewhere. I am not the biggest fan of cheesy ones, but these have deep meaning, right? So find something that has deep meaning to you and really hits you in your soul and keep it somewhere that you can look at daily. I hope you guys enjoyed this workshop. I enjoy doing it for you. Um, as I said before, my name is April M. Woodard. I'm an author of the Aaron Chronicle series and a writer wellness coach. And you can find me and my services at authorAprilMWoodard.com. Or you can find me on Instagram at April M. Woodard. And then you see little underscores there. And so thank you again so much. I appreciate every single one of you for coming. Don't forget that there is a $20 giveaway. So you go to my Instagram. I have a post that says uh, the writer giveaway and you leave a comment and let me know what you learned today or what you liked most about my workshop. All right, now we're going to get to some Q&A guys. Let me stop the share real quick. All righty. I thought I saw some people who had their hands raised. And look at, I'm looking for it in the chat. Anybody in the chat, if you have a question or you have, oh, there's Q&A right there. What do you personally do to relax? So um, like I said, Netflix, um, sometimes I'll read. I think the biggest thing I like to do is nap, honestly. Um, yeah, TV, watching Netflix, the crime documentaries is, is really, is really my thing. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much what I do. Um, anything usually with reading though, I'm always picking it apart. And so that's the reason I try not to read while I'm taking a break from writing because I will either like get ideas for my book or I will feel like, oh, you know, I need to not do this in my book or, oh, here's a good idea, you know, how I can do something similar. Do you find that sometimes spending too much time away from your writing can be bad for your creativity? No. Well, it depends on how much time you take away. Um, if you schedule the time, this is what I found. If I just, I like get distracted by things that are going on in my life, um, events, whatnot, and I just get away from it. Like say you get writer's block. Oh, my internet connection is unstable. Hopefully you guys can hear me. If I just get like writer's block or something and I step away from my document, but I don't come back to it, say a couple months without scheduling those couple months. Yeah, you can or work on another work in progress and totally get off track. Right. Um, yes, you it's it can be bad for your creativity and you got to do what's right for you. Me personally, I like to schedule all my time. So when I have a break, I schedule it like it is in my planner or it's on my calendar. Um, I, I don't just take a break unless I'm really feeling a little more burnt out. But if I schedule, I don't usually get burned out because I know my limits. And sometimes when you're doing your first book or drafting out your first anything, it takes you a little while to figure out 
what it is, how your schedule is, what it is that is your breaking point, but you don't even want to get close to the breaking point. Um, so I'm working with a client right now. She's like, I can do this time of the day to this time of the day. Um, and she said, it's kind of like me. Uh, hers is five o'clock. Mine's 2 p.m. where I'm done. My brain shuts off. I've worked plenty. Um, I'm finished. So you just got to find your balance for you personally. And it's different for everybody. Out of interest, are you waiting? What is what is my work in progress uh, that uh, am I working on next or am I waiting? So I just finished um, my fourth book and final book in my series, The Aeon Chronicles. Right now I'm waiting for my cover artist. So I am taking, I'm actually going to be taking probably six months off of writing. <laughs> probably not. But I told myself to, I mean, because I did this series a year after year after year, except when COVID hit, I took six months off that I didn't want to take off, but I didn't have a choice. I was homeschooling my children. Um, but yeah, I, I plan to take a lot of time off, but I do have two, actually three works in progress that I plan. I actually had a dream that spurred another um, book idea. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. I would love to tell everybody what it's, what book meets what book, but I don't want to. I don't want to, it's too precious to tell. Um, but yes, so, uh, I will be taking some time off because I have dedicated, um, five years straight of my life to that book series. And I think I deserve a little bit of time off. Uh, but yes, I will be working on something some sometime in 2002, most likely. Do I have any advice on how to know when your breaking point and limits are? Yeah. Oh. If you start getting stressed out, basically, um, more writer's block. If you are not feeling creative, take a break. Take a day off. Just one day, I'll, you know, probably do. Um, if you have a lot going on with family, if you have an emotional stress with family or anything going on, it's going to be very hard to write. So I do suggest really taking time to give yourself, as I always say, grace for the real world. I would love to be in my fictional world. 24 seven when I'm super in it and like, you know, like you're in the zone, but that's, you can't do that because there's a real, another real world, you know, out there and you have, you have to, um, talk to it. You have to engage with it and you have to be a part of it. Um, especially with your family. That's why I say family is so important. Please, please do not put them on the side. Uh, you, I have regrets about doing that the one year that I did. And I was like, sorry guys, I don't have time for you. Cause they told me, they're like, mom, all you did was right. And we felt really like not loved. <laughs> I, was like, I was a bad parent for that one year. How did I get back into writing after such a long time off? You mean the six months that, uh, during COVID and homeschooling and all that fun stuff. Um, I was constantly thinking about my book. I just wasn't able to actually sit down and write. I, I wasn't able to schedule out time and actually dedicate writing time. Uh, a big suggestion I make to you guys is to always, when you have your phone, you have, everybody has their phone with them, right? Always take notes, whether it be one liner of dialogue, whether it be, you know, um, a little bit back and forth of dialogue between characters, a scene that you're really inspired by, just write down, grab pictures from Pinterest, whatever, put them on like your, um, your Canva boards or your, um, like your notes in your phone. Um, if you see something in a book that you're inspired by, write it down. Always keep notes. Um, that's how my second and third book were actually written. It was just all notes from my phone. I did not actually sit down to write a blank page. And it was amazing because I was like, I have something to go off of. Like, I do not have to start and, and be like, how is this going to like, how do I start the sentence? There was always something inspired there. So yeah, I highly suggest you guys just take lots of notes. Oh, you are so, so very welcome. Thank you for coming. I really apologize that I got the time wrong. Uh, super embarrassing. I feel really, really bad. I'm going to have to go apologize to everybody on Instagram that I told it was 12 o'clock Eastern time. It was apparently 11. Uh, thank you so much for uh, sticking around. Um, and I will be most likely putting this on my YouTube channel. So if you have not subscribed, please uh, go do that. If you're interested in my content, if you're interesting, interested in any coaching, 
Um, I will be having more services. If you have any services that you want me to do that are not on my website, message me in a DM on Instagram or um, email me. Uh, I've got some stuff that I have not put on there too. So, um, but yes, thank y'all so very much. Does anybody else have any questions before? Because I know you guys have been here a very long time. A very, very long time you've already been here. Let's see if I missed anything. No, I did not miss anything. Okay. And I really appreciate Melissa for standing in for me. She has been amazing throughout this whole entire thing. So I really have to like, really have to give her lots and lots of kudos. Uh, you guys need to go follow her on Instagram. She like, I don't even know how she did all this and it looked amazing. Everything she did. So, um, thank you. A big thank you to her. Oh, thank you guys. Um, don't forget about the giveaway. I'm pretty sure I've already posted on Instagram or I was supposed to post it on Instagram today after I did this. Let's see. I'll have to look. Uh, da, 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 da. No, I will be posting it here in just a little bit where you'll be able to leave a comment um, of what you liked about the workshop or what you learned about the workshop. You can even ask more questions. Feel free to DM me. Um, like I said, feel free anytime you are curious and you want to know a little more about um, writer wellness. I am Oh, it, yes, it's a $20 gift card, guys, to Amazon so that you can buy whatever you want, whether it be writing craft books, self-care items, uh, like a water bottle, like you do you. Like, I want people to be able to get what they want to get. I was going to do like a writing craft book, but I've got a lot on my shelf and I don't even know what everybody has. So, uh, yes, I I definitely want to make sure that, and it's, you know, almost Christmas time. I'm like, you know what, guys, is like, give a gift to yourself. So yes, uh, thank you so, so much. Uh, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for joining. And I will talk to you later. Later, lovelies.